Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Wednesday? Whew. It's been a long weekend. <laughs> Holiday weekend, birthday weekend. It's just been a true, true blessing all the way around. I pray that everyone is having an amazing morning thus far. It's early, but some people get up earlier than this. Um, so I pray that your morning has gotten off to an amazing start. Uh, Women, you know how it is when you have that little piece of hair that you just can't seem to do anything with. But I come to you this morning, continue reading Jesus in Red. And the title of this um, devotional is True Peace. True Peace. Some people faking that they have peace. But whatever house you enter, first say, peace in this house. Luke 10 and 5. Very few in today's generation truly appreciate what it means for a nation to be at peace. After the end of the Second War, World War V, years of horrifying war and loss over 60 million lives, the world was able to enjoy and appreciate peace. Sometimes you can have turmoil going all around you, chaos and craziness. And if that's something you used to, you won't understand what peace really feel like. God can give you peace and you, you know, you looking for the arguments, you looking for the, uh, the grudges, you looking for the unforgiveness, you looking for, you know, and God is saying, I'm trying to give you peace. However, the Bible speaks of another peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. When you go through certain things in life and you're able to go through them, go through your storms without giving up, without feeling like you're not going to make it. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you may not have those feelings, but you just know you can't stay there. It is. It is the sort of peace that can possess in the midst of noise, in a storm, and even in and even in the middle of a war. We're in a war right now. We, uh, uh, the body of Christ, the body of Christ is in a war amongst each other. But somehow we got to pray and ask God, Lord, give me peace through this. I'm not used to this. Lord, settle, you know, quiet, quiet this noise down. There is yet another piece of which the Bible often speaks. And this is the most important. It is, it is peace with God that was purchased by Jesus on the cross. That peace right there, it can, on, it can only come from Jesus. His sacrifice his suffering, who he is, his love, most importantly, his love. We were at war with, the, with our creator. We were enemies of God in our minds because of what the Bible calls our wicked works. But God's love came to us with a plan of peace that through the cross, we could have the peace of God. And peace with God through trusting in our Lord Jesus. At the, it, it goes right back to Jesus. If you want that perfect peace, you have to uh, stay connected to him. He says stay connected to the vine. We have to stay connected to him. We can't have the true authentic peace walking outside of Jesus. It's just not going to work. Because him dwelling on the inside of us, it'll make you apologize. It'll make you get things right. It'll make you reason with one another. It'll make you come to the table and say, listen, let's talk this thing out. Let's, let, you know, let's see where uh, uh, we went wrong here. And when you come to the table, it's not about being right. It's about getting it right. And that's where so many of us get it wrong. You know, if somebody has apologized, whether you feel like wherever it came from, you're held, you held accountable if you receive it or not. And if you don't receive it, 
your turmoil, it continues. Your chaos, it continues. Your war, it continues. But even if you feel like the person apologized and it wasn't nothing to it, just say, well, Lord, I don't think it was real, but you know their heart. And you just allow me to accept it so I can just move forward. And Lord, if they if it wasn't real, Lord, you deal with their heart. That's how you do it. And you just move forward. Now it's time to do some soul searching. Do I appreciate peace with God? And do I keep my peace in the storm? There, you know, there was a time in my life where I thought I had peace. But it was in peace in the midst of chaos, craziness, um, bitterness, regret. Um, honestly, no true love. Um, manipulation. Um, being unappreciated. Um, being left out of the know. Pushed aside. All of that. And that was normal to me. I thought I, I thought I thought that that was peace. I didn't, you know, when you end something, that's all you know. It's just like, <clears throat> a, thank you, Holy Spirit. Just like a dog in a cage. If he done been in that cage, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and finally you open up that gate or open up that door, or that you know unlatch his door for him to come out. He'll come out just a little bit and he'll, and he'll, he'll just look around. Why? Because he can't, he, he don't know what's going on on the outside. He don't know if he can trust that outside environment. All he knows is what he's been caged to. So I was caged to all that stuff and all that stuff was normal to me. But then when that one morning when God delivered me, when God said, no, you're no longer going to defend yourself. I'm like, Lord, that's all I'm used to doing. I'm used to saying, remember me. I'm used to saying, do you know who I am? I'm used to saying, can you please include me? Can, I'm used to saying, stop leaving me out. I'm used to saying, this is who I am. That's who I am. And God said, stop. Stop. Because their heart has hardened towards who they think you are. And that's because they don't know who you are. So they're still holding on to your past, what you did, what you didn't do, what you didn't say, what you didn't give. Maybe I didn't have it to give. May I did, maybe I didn't know to do that. So we have to be careful and give one another grace. But again, I thought that that was peace. I thought that that was normal. I was looking at other folks, uh, friendship and relationship and family ship and I'm thinking I'm thinking something wrong with them all along something's wrong with you know in my circle but that one morning I was I was completely delivered and and it was scary it was scary I'm like Lord I'm not where are you taking me he said peace that surpasses all understanding that when people still rejecting you it just rolls off your back. When people still overlooking you, it just rolls off your back. When people's not including you, it just rolls off your back. When people's talking about you, it just rolling off your back. When people lying about you, it just rolling off your back. When people uh, coming together and phone calls and texts and uh, 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 um, FaceTime talking about you, it just rolling off your back. Because one thing we have to know, God sees and knows it all. We can fool each other. But God is saying, I know what's being said. I know what's being done. But I need you to keep your heart right. See, Jesus didn't retaliate when things was going against him. And he had every right to retaliate. But he didn't do it. So sometimes God is just saying, shh, peace be still. Don't say a word. Don't fight back. Don't plot to get back. But the devil is saying, get them. Don't take that. You know, show, show up with your armor. <laughs> your flesh. But then, now God has to now deal with you. Had you just listened to him and just walked away and just allowed him to fight your battle, now he's got to deal with you. And I'm learning now. Man, the last couple of years, man, I've had to 
close my mouth on some tough stuff. I'm going to say, I'm going to include them two years, but I'm going to say within the last four or five months. I'm like, Lord, now you see. He says, shh. Lord, now you know that that's not right. He says, shh. Lord, now... <laughs> Lord, now that's to the now, now, Lord, now you already know. He says, "Shh." If God is telling you to shh, it's best for you to just shh and just be quiet. Oh, it's gonna hurt this flesh, because honey, when you used to saying, "Okay," but the things you used to do, you don't do anymore. You don't act the way you used to act. You don't talk the way you used to act. How can God show, reveal who you are if nothing about you has changed? You still getting with people? You still going off on people? You still letting people know what you think? You still letting people know where they can go? Where is the change? Where is the fruit of love? How are you going to win someone and you still operating in your flesh. You still, when you look in the mirror, you looking just like the world. How are you going to win them? How are you going to win something that's already what it is? The world ain't winning the world. We as the body of Christ, we supposed to be winning the world. But we're starting to look so much like the world. Tell people just don't, you know. Sometimes you know how it is when you're in a crowd. You bump into somebody, you be like, oh, oh. People supposed to know who you are when they bump into you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They're supposed to know who you are. They should see your character. They should see how you live and how you talk and how you showing up, how you forgive and how you letting go. They should, they should see fruit that there's been a change in you. Now, let me put a springboard in there, as, as the great Mother Emerson would say. Sometimes people is not going to accept you, even though they see the change. Because your light now shines on their darkness. Your light now sh sh shines where they're at, where they're lost, where they need compassion, where they need more grace, even though they don't think they need it. But you just keep on shining. You just keep on moving forward. Don't look back. Don't go back. Don't diminish who you are to try to fit in. I did all of that. I lost myself trying to please people. I lost myself trying to be uh, uh, um, included. But I had to, God said no more. Because you would never know who you are if you're constantly flying on somebody else's wing. Because if you're flying on somebody else's wing, you can only go where they take you. You can only go where they lead you. So we got to get off the wings of people because if you're flying on their wing, they're in control. They're in control of your progress. They're in control of your growth. They're in control of, of, of you know, what you do in life, how you constantly think about yourself. You got to get off the wings of people. And the prayer for today is, Father, thank you that the war between you and me is over. We got to stop fighting when God has called us to a specific uh, duty, uh, job, journey, whatever it is. We got to stop fighting him because he's not going to call us to do something that he hasn't equipped us to show up for. Let go. Let go of trying to be right. Let, let go of trying to be perfect because I come to tell you, you'll never be. Stop trying to judge other people and tear other people down. All of these are your wars. All of these are your walls. Come out from behind your wall. Be authentic to yourself. And realize that you'll never be perfect. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care about the job that you have. You'll never be perfect. And no, you may not have did the things that I did. But there are some things that you did. That you got to give an account for. We don't have time to be pointing the finger at one another and judging one another and tearing down one another. And you know, that's foolishness. That's foolishness. If you want true peace, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
That is the only way. The only way you, you will experience true peace. Sometimes people think they got peace because they got a nice home. They got a nice car. They got an amazing husband, amazing wife, a career. And you see so many people have all of that stuff. And they still empty. They still not happy. And a lot of people is really trapped in unforgiveness. When you operating in unforgiveness, it's robbing you of the life that God has prepared for you. And you not going to wiggle and lie your way to get what God has for you. You may fool people. You may fool Facebook and whatever, and whatever other social media that you're on. But God knows where you at. We can hide behind our smile. God knows where you at. At the end of the day, if you want that true peace, you can only find it by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior into your heart. And I'm going to tell you, the day I accepted Jesus into my heart, my life changed. When I lost my husband, my life changed. Two years ago, uh, one morning, my life changed. But you got to let go of what's toxic. You got to walk away from what uh, is not uh, benefiting you, what's draining you. Sometimes people say that you're draining. They don't realize that they're draining too. And sometimes when you don't have the backbone, what you need to remove yourself, God will remove you. I mean, he, he, you know, he's had to do it to me a couple of times. I just didn't have the backbone. I just didn't want to hurt no one's feeling. All, all at the expense of never really knowing who I was, never really knowing my value, never really knowing, never really knowing that I was somebody. Because I was surrounded by judgment. But one morning, God said, no more. This is it. This, this is where I draw the line. Because I see you're not able to draw it. This is where I draw the line. Today, this morning, God wants to give somebody peace. And your peace may come with losing some things. And unfortunately, losing some people. But I'm trying to tell you. It's worth it. I wouldn't have it no other way. There's nothing. The way God took me, I wouldn't change it. Did it hurt? You better believe it. But it hurts worse not knowing who you are. That's the worst feeling ever. I'm looking at myself now and I'm like, oh Lord, I never seen myself in that light. I ne Lord, is that me? <laughs> you know. So we got to get off the wings of people. Get off the wings of people because they are in, they are in control of your growth. They they are in control of you ever knowing who you are. They they are in control how high you would fly. Why? Because you're on their wings. And that's what I'm saying. I was on the wings of people's mercy, just trying to fit in, just trying to be loved, just trying to be accepted, just trying to be acknowledged. All of it failed. So with that being said, I got to get off here, hit this highway, and I'm headed to work. I pray that everyone have an amazing day. Remember what I always say. No matter what you're going through, speak life. Speak life. Speak life. So, again, everybody have an amazing day. Don't be negative. Don't you allow negativity. And remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you speak is what you harvest. What you speak is what you harvest. What you allow come out of your mouth is what you'll give birth to. And so I'm birthing all healthy things now. All, all my blessings are healthy. All my blessings have their arms, their legs, their fingers, their toes, their eyes, their ears, their nose. It, it, it's all healthy. Why? I start speaking life. Why? Because God removed me from what was toxic. I didn't realize it was toxic. 
Why? Because again, I was like that dog in that cage. It was normal to me. It was familiar to me. But one morning, God said, it's time, it's time for your deliverance. And I thank God I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't have it no other way. It hurt. It will hurt when God begin to remove certain people out of your life. And these are people that you've always been around that you thought that meant you some good. And then God begins to show you, you don't know what I know. You don't see what I see. You didn't hear what I heard. Because he's only for so long that you're going to be able to do his children, his chosen. There's only... Um, you only have so long to keep doing what you're doing in the dark. And then he steps in. Because why? He ponders the heart. God knew you was going to never win that individual because he knew their heart wasn't right. And so what he does, eventually he says, daughter, son, you have to move forward. Right now they stuck. So you have to pray for them and you have to move forward. And be who God has called you to be. So that's all I have for this morning. Again, uh, the title, if you didn't catch the beginning, go back to the beginning. But the title was True Peace. True Peace. When you're walking in true peace, your life is going to show it. True peace don't come with the things that you have or things that you possess. Peace comes with, um, peace comes from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Peace comes from knowing who you are and who you was created to be. Once your God reveals to you who you are, man, you, you protecting that peace at all costs. When anything, look, the Bible says shine the very appearance of evil. If it looked like something that's getting ready to attack my peace, I'm going, I'm going in a different direction. If I look like some mess getting ready to get started, I'm going in the opposite direction. I'm running from it now. I don't have time for it. Life is short. And I don't want to be caught with my works undone. So if I have to leave the party, goodbye, I'll see y'all later. I got to go. I got things to do. I got people to see. I got people to encourage. I got people to uplift. So with that being said, I'm going to hop off here. I pray to everyone again. Have an amazing day. Good morning, TT. That's one of my faithful ones. <laughs> All the way from uh, Mississippi. Well, I'm going to get off here. I got to go. Until next time, everyone be blessed. And remember, there is true peace that surpasses all understanding. But the only way you can possess, possess that true peace is through Jesus Christ. It's not going to come from the things of this world. There's something to ponder over. Ask yourself, am I living in peace? Am I living in true peace? Am I living in authentic peace? That if these things that I have, if God was to allow them to be taken as Job did, will I still be at peace? Will I say naked I came in this world and naked I go out? Something to think about. I got to go. Everyone have an amazing day. God bless.